Good day. My name is Tim Shalpati. I'm the president of Veterans Office Solutions. Today's topic is, during COVID, the real heroes are first responders, part two. Our guest is J. Joe Martinez, who had participated extensively in the Veterans Park here in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and the Bataan Death March. He is the main organizer for the First Responders Memorial Park, which will be here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mr. Martinez, would you please continue where you left off concerning the school students? Uh, certainly, thank you for having me back to finish this. It's a, it's a passion, you know, to do these things, and so it means a lot. Uh, in our last conversation, uh, we talked about the memorial being off of Valley Drive and Hadley. The, uh, there is an existing fire station there right now, Firehouse Number 3, which uh, in, in the early conversations with the city, they were talking about tearing it down. My suggestion was to, if it's possible, if it's not totally deteriorated, it's a very old firehouse, would be to update it, so to speak, and, and turn it into a first responders museum. And that would be directly to the north of the brand new state-of-the-art firehouse that they're going to build. So anyway, in the conversation, I, I was mentioning that I could envision in looking at, 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 at the aerial view of this and the ball field over to the left and, and us occupying Pitcher's Mound for our large memorial. Our memorial across the base will be about 20 to 22 foot wide and it'll be up to about 20 to 22 foot tall. So it will stand out and be able to be seen from Valley Drive pretty easy. But I envisioned uh, school children, fifth and sixth graders, going on a field trip with their teachers and maybe some parents that would come along to help uh, corral the crowd. <laughs> and uh, the buses could park over here on the side, where, where the other side of the ball field, which would be set up as parking. And the students could get out and with proper people to show and to explain, representatives from those different agencies that we'll be honoring, they can explain to them the fire department, the police department, the border patrol, the state police, the, the synergy between all of these agencies and how they come together to become one as first responders in a crisis. And so when they're finished with that, they could walk over to the cluster of trees to the north of, of the ball field um, and, and they could sit there and eat their little sandwiches and whatever and have somebody talking to them explaining part two and part three of this little venture. Because when they would finish eating, they could walk towards Valley Drive and go into that old firehouse and see that it was a working fire station up until just you know a few years prior. And they would have an opportunity to see memorabilia in the fire station uh, museum. And Mr. Martinez, can you explain to our viewership, what type of personnel will be managing the First Responders Memorial Park? Well, of course, it would be a city park. Uh, the city uh, would, would have their personnel, of course, taking care of the grass and taking care of all of that through our Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, Sonia Delgado, who's the director there, is very excited about getting into this. She's a very sharp young lady, and. Uh, she'll do very well in making sure that this is all complete and everything looks good. Uh, but as far as the museum itself, I, I would think that probably we would go to the cultural center or the cultural society, that uh, the cabinet position in Santa Fe, and get the direction of what they would need to have, would maybe have to hire a couple of people through that auspices of the state to make it one of the museums in, in, their, in their statewide organization. That would be just my guess. I, I'm not very schooled in that. I just know that that's, they're all under, under one, one roof. Like Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum is all part of that as well. So maybe we would be able to work something in consort with them and maybe some of their people could come and work part-time. And I, I don't know. It's just there's all, all kinds of possibilities. 
And then, of course, after the kids went to the museum and saw the different things that uh, represent the agencies that we'll be honoring, they could then be taken over to the brand new state-of-the-art firehouse, meet real firemen, have them sit down in an area either outside or inside and be able to really understand what a firehouse is and how it runs and the personnel and the heart and, and mind of those firemen. The, the state-of-the-art firehouse I keep referring to is, uh, this is a rendering, an artist's rendering, I think it's probably up on your screen or will be soon, and it, uh, it shows that it, it's going to be a large complex, and in, in, the, in the drawings that we showed earlier, it actually so, showed how it laid out on the field. And, and if, if you look there, it's very modern looking. It doesn't look like any firehouse you've ever seen, except maybe in Los Angeles area. <laughs> and uh, they do things a little bit different, and so I guess we're going to try to catch up. But it's supposed to be one of the biggest and the best. The money's been appropriated through the gold bond issue. And now it's just a matter of dotting all the T's and crossing all the I's and, uh, and getting started on that construction. Mr. Martinez, does your committee have anything to do with the actual construction work? Well, I'm, I'm a little, I mean, I guess I'm like, like the dad, you know. Uh, uh, Dad's going to be involved from beginning to end. You know, and so yeah, yeah. I'll have I'll have a committee, and I'll together we'll have a say. But in most cases, on the other two projects, I had final word. I mean, it's my design, it's my dream, it's my. I hate to use those pronouns, I and my. But the committee works in consort to make things happen, and you can see by what we've talked about earlier. I've had to change my mind two or three times and realize that there's something better out there and another idea worked better than mine. So we're open to all kinds of suggestions. And Mr. Martinez, for the research for First Responders Memorial Park, how is that done? Research for the naming of it or do you mean... How do you do the research for the park itself? Well, the park is small enough to where it's not, it's, not, it's not like Veterans Park was, where we put in one piece and then another piece was put in by somebody else and so on and so forth. You know, the ones that, that uh, Arlene and I, my wife and I, were, were involved in and designed and, and followed from beginning to end is the Bataan Memorial, the, the three soldiers walking in the march, and the Vietnam Memorial. But the ladies have done a magnificent one as well, and so did, uh, so did a bunch of volunteers from, from Doniana County. That big, magnificent wall that's out there is unparalleled anywhere in the state. That lists every single person from Doniana County that was in the military from the Spanish-American War all the way up to current. And they don't have to be deceased. They don't have to be anything. They were just participants in, in, in war. And Mr. Martinez, can you explain how the donations would be used for things such as posters and t-shirts, et cetera? Well, you know, we've, uh, we've set a pretty good pattern in the past. And uh, right now, uh, we've, we, have, uh, we have these preliminary drawings that, that I did, which are certainly not professional. Uh, we've got them in the hands of uh, uh, Shane Umphreys, who has a company called CADWorks, and he has donated his time and his company to put all of this together into what we would consider works in drawings. In other words, suitable to be able to hand to a contractor to get the thing built. And then from that, from his illustrations, we will turn it over to Judd Wright. Judd Wright is a local artist, and Judd uh, did the Vietnam Memorial for us, uh, drew it, and we made posters from it. We'll do the same. We'll take the information that uh, Humphreys does and get it to Judd Wright, and Judd will then put it in uh, a, a drawing that we will accept, and then it will we'll be able to have a poster. Now, so, a long way around to get to it, but in talking about the finances, we will be selling posters, we will be selling baseball caps, we'll be selling t-shirts, 
will be selling coins, commemorative coins. Almost anything that we've sold in the past, we will duplicate again with a picture of the memorial on it. And whether it's a baseball cap or whether it's a bandana, or maybe we'll have some masks made <laughs> that will have, have it on them. But the bricks are, are, are a large thing. The, uh, the, the circle around, I didn't, I didn't post this picture, but I'll just explain it. Uh, there's, uh, again, my, my drawings. And what it is, it shows, it shows a circle. Uh, like if you're looking from an aerial view down on top of the memorial. The actual memorial will be 18 foot across, octagonally, and then, okay, then there will be a six foot, no, I'm sorry, four foot apron all the way around it. And all these that you see, my little illustrations, will be bricks. We sell bricks, commemorative bricks, for $40 a brick. It's exactly the same as we did at Vietnam. And if you take a look at that, we have room for 1,024 bricks. And with that many bricks at $40 a piece, it, uh, it runs into some pretty good money to help us with, with the process. And then in front of each one of these uh, octagonal pieces representing the different branches, on the periphery, say on the outside here, will be a marble bench. And marble benches will be able to be sponsored and, 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 and sold uh, or, or to raise funds. At, uh, I think at the Vietnam we have six benches and we raise $2,500 per bench. And they're solid, they're solid uh, marble and so they're not going to be easily stolen. And then we had patrons pay the $2,500 and had it laser etched to say uh, for Uncle Willie, you know, and whatever. They, they could put anything within reason on those commemoratives. Uh, Heritage Hotels bought one of those and put Jack Key Motors, uh, who has retired now and there is no Jack Key. Well, Jack's still here, but he bought a bench. He was a Korean veteran. So these things will all be possible within the confines of first responders. My idea would be to have each one of those agencies go within their own, their own uh, agencies and raise funds and buy one to represent their group. And Mr. Martinez, can you explain for our viewership how the monies will be derived to pay for First Responders Memorial Park? Well, first of all, let me tell you what it's going to cost. The preliminary, preliminary cost of this from beginning to end, construction, electrical, uh, everything, is about $250,000. Now, everything goes up. Nothing comes down. So when you're looking at a cost evaluation of today, and it takes two years to finish, there's going to be some cost overruns. So normally what we'll say, it, it's $250,000 plus or minus 10%. So that, that gives you a pretty good judge that it could be up to 275000 instead of two fifty. Thank you for that excellent explanation, Mr. Martinez. We will take a short momentary break. Please stay with us. Thank you. But um bum If we want to improve America's healthcare system, let's start by improving the health of Americans. Despite the best doctors, hospitals, and medical advancements, Americans are not as healthy as they should be. We spend too much on treatment and not enough on wellness and prevention. We need a system based on primary care. When patients have a medical home and a long-term relationship with a doctor, the result is a longer, healthier life and reduced medical costs for everyone. Let's make America a place where health is primary. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called leathernecks. They've been called devil gods. 
But above all, they're called Marines. Thank you for staying with us again. My name is Tim Shelpatty, President of Veterans Office Solutions. Our guest is J. Joe Martinez. Mr. Martinez, would you show our viewership what a mock-up of the Memorial Park would look like? Sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think, uh, I think we have one ready to put up, and you'll take a look at it there. This is, this is actually going to be changed. The general look is exactly the same as it's going to be. If you look at the bottom pieces, those will represent the black marble. And you see, I ended up with brown paper, but it's supposed to be black marble. But uh, I told you I wasn't really good at this kind of stuff. I just dream up the ideas. Uh, so the, the first layer that you see those arches will be six foot tall. And then the next level will be eight foot tall, which of course is not represented there because the statues, all the bronze that you see there will be life size. So the fireman and the police officer will be six foot, six foot men. And then the lady who is the EMT, uh, she will be probably about, I don't know, five, seven, five, ten, something like that. It, and all the regalia that is required to do their job. Then you'll see the Belgian Melanois dog there and you'll see some of the paraphernalia there that is used for the rescue. Now, what's going to be different is that that back wall that has some Vega post sticking out and looks like windows and looks like fire in the middle one, that's going to come down. The, repl the replicas of the windows and the Vegas are going to go on the eight foot wall next to the, next to the, fire fi next to the police officer and the EMT. The fireman's up on top. And the reason is, is because now that we're going to be in a, in a cylinder drive to where people can drive in and they need to be able to see it from all sides. This was going to be the layout when it was going to be across the street from the police and fire department facing. And that way you would see it from the front and it wouldn't be an issue. But now that we're going to have the, the cylinder drive, uh, it, it required a little bit of, of, of moving things around. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the, the trees in, in this illustration are the actual trees that are in front of Brannigan Library. I took pictures and split it and put it on a board and made it look like it was there. <laughs> that's cut and paste. You know, there's no art to that. That's just putting things together. But anyway, that's essentially what it'll look like. Uh, and, and starting from the top, you'll see the fireman. The fireman is crouched down on one knee. He's got his breathing apparatus, his helmet on, his big coat, and he's got a, a, an air pack on the back. And he is holding a little child in his hand, and he's reaching down with the child to the police officer who's standing there, waiting to receive the child. Now, if you look to the side of the, of the fireman, you see that dog, that rescue dog is looking straight across. And he's looking at that fireman, don't you dare drop that boy. I rescued him, but you better save him. So he's talking to him in his, with his eyes. And then the police officer standing there next to the ladder. He's waiting to receive the child. And the EMT is standing there with a nice blanket of sorts to be able to pick up the child and, and get him to the safety of, of an ambulance. And Mr. Martinez, can you explain for our viewership what is the timeline for the First Responders Memorial Park? Well, it, uh, it, it has changed once, obviously. We talked earlier about COVID and what it's done to the nation as far as putting things on hold. But uh, sometimes things happen for a reason. You know, when we did, when we did Baton, we had invited uh, President Bush, and he was coming. He had already sent out the front people to, uh, to the, his, his Secret Service, uh, had, they were, had met with our state police and they were already uh, canvassing the neighborhoods around Veterans Park. And then there was a bombing in Yemen, it was just after 9-11, so he had to stay in Washington to do his presidential things. And, and the reality of it was that we were all set, the Air Force One was going to land at Holloman, he was going to be helicoptered from there to our park, and all the pomp and circumstance goes with the president coming. So the reality is, had the president come, 
the focus would have changed. It would have changed from our veterans and what they had to go through to the pomp and circumstance of the president. So in a manner of speaking, it was better that he didn't come because the concentration went where it needed to be. This in a way is exactly the same thing. We were gonna dedicate this on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And now with COVID, I can't. There's, there's no way we can get this project done. It's gonna take a year to do the bronze. So in thinking back, in retrospect, to do it on 9-11, there's gonna be 20th anniversary stuff all over the country. Commemorative deals, stars and stripes, everything going to honor the 9-11 responders. And we'd just be a little, little hiccup this big to have them come to Las Cruces. So the idea is, well, we'll do the nationwide thing. We'll be under construction. We can do a little something out there just to commemorate. But the better thing is to wait and do it correctly and have our own venue when no one else is. Because then we can invite dignitaries down and they won't be tied up doing something else. We can get Good Morning America to come and send out their lead people and do a nationwide broadcast of the only memorial of its kind in probably the Southwest, who knows, maybe this side of the Mississippi, who knows. But we're gonna get as much recognition for the city of Las Cruces. We're gonna make it a destination we're gonna make it to where when people pull up uh, on the convention, the visitor bureau site, just like they do for Veterans Park. It's gonna pop up with this memorial and it's gonna show. And Mr. Martinez, when you say Las Cruces, all these events are in Las Cruces, New Mexico. That is correct, that is correct. And can you explain for our viewership the difficulty it is to raise money during these COVID times? Well, it's hard, it's hard to answer that, except for even though we are in, in, in troubled times and even though we are in circumstances that uh, people are out of jobs and, and all kinds of different things that we've never had to face, the fact of the matter is people are still donating to our first responders. They are still clapping when people when first responders come by. So I, I think that it's going to be a little harder maybe than we did for Vietnam or Bataan, but I don't think we're going to have a hiccup. I think that we're going to be able to get this done where people, people who can't afford to give $100 will buy a $40 brick. People that can't afford businesses to give $1,000 will sponsor a, something. You know, people recognize the fact that if it wasn't for the first responders, well, I've always said there's nobody in the land Nobody that hasn't had an occasion to need a first responder. And with that. How does one become a first responder? Well, I guess you have to have the, the heart. You have to have the passion. I had a brother-in-law who was a Marine. When he came back, he got on the uh, Albuquerque PD. And that was 50 years ago. But nonetheless, uh, you have to have a passion. You have to have a reason. It, it, uh, I don't think you just wake up one morning and say, doggone it, I'm gonna become a nurse. I have a little granddaughter who's in nursing school right now in Oklahoma. She's in her second year getting her degree as well in nursing. And from the time she was a little girl, she liked to play with the stethoscopes and the little things we buy our children for toys. So it's something that evolves over time. My sister is 84 years old, 83 years old, forgive me. <laughs> uh, and she was that way. I have five sisters, I'm the only boy. And uh, they used to call me Dr. Pills because when they had all their dolls out, I'd walk around with the little tool kit that I used for, and all I had was little candy pills. And when their babies were sick, the little dolls, they'd call me, come call Dr. Pills. I'd go in there and give them candy. <laughs> worked for them. <laughs> so I never wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to operate, but I didn't want to be a doctor. <laughs> and uh, what are the duties of a first responder? Well, if you're a policeman, is one thing. If you're a fireman, it's similar, but it's different. Ideally, the, 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 the best explanation that I have ever heard is a first responder is someone going into the fray while the rest of the people are running away from it.
And do you know how a first responder trains? Well, I can tell you when I was a young man living in Albuquerque, I thought maybe it might be a neat deal. To, my brother-in-law was a cop, you know. I said, well, I'm going to join, see if I can join the sheriff's department up there. I, I couldn't, I mean, I've never been a little guy. I mean, in those days, I was probably 6'1 and uh, about 175. And uh, I couldn't do I couldn't do pull-ups. Never been able to. I'm too bottom heavy. <laughs> I just can't do it. My arms would have to be the size of my legs to be able to. So I, I got washed out. I couldn't do the agility test. So if I'd had the passion, maybe I'd have gone and worked out and done it. But I didn't have the passion. It just seemed like the thing to do. Thank you for that excellent explanation, Mr. Martinez. Again, if you would like more information please call J. Joe Martinez Farmers Insurance Agency at 615 North Solano here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. His telephone number is area code 575-222-4336. And just ask for J. Joe and he'd be happy to explain this to you. If you would like to send your tax-free contributions, please send them to Community Foundation of Southern New Mexico, 2600 El Paseo Drive, here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The zip code is 88001. And please, on the check, on the memo line, please write for the First Responder Memorial. We would appreciate your contributions. We appreciate your viewership. Until next time, we say good day. That's Thank my you. Closing.